everyone. My name is Nicola Paolucci. I am a developer instigator at Atlassian. And today I want to tell you about um, the results of a hackathon, or as we call it, a Ship It project. That I think uh, uh, it's uh, fun to share and uh, you find uh, interesting. So for those that don't know, uh, at Atlassian, we have um, a big culture of um, innovation and experimentation. And so every quarter, the company stops for 24 hours and anybody can pick uh, their own project. They scratch their own each, form groups and sprint and spike uh, new ideas for uh, to solve our own pro uh, problems. It can be things completely off the wall, it can be uh, tiny, tiny improvements and can be uh, something uh, very innovating, very fun very uh, uh, several of very important features that have been included in our products came out of of this sort of um, uh, sprints of innovation so it's always a very exciting time for me uh, some time ago i was in san francisco and i paired up with um, a couple of, uh, of colleagues and this is what i wanted to work on so as you guys know i know or not know i am being very excited about docker i've been talking about docker a lot and um, and there's one thing that i thought would be easy to do and so i got to work so my idea was the docker registry collects uh, a lot of software packages already um, images ready made ready to be used and uh, we already have a, a quite cool integration with the docker registry in the sense that uh, you can set up the Docker registry to rebuild your image anytime you push something to Bitbucket. So uh, the integration from Bitbucket to the Docker registry is already in place. What I thought about was, wouldn't it be nice if we could show the state of the images and also the interaction with the Docker community in Bitbucket? Yeah, that seems something relatively easy to do and also a piece of useful, useful integration. And so. Uh, I brainstormed a little bit how to do it, and uh, what I realized uh, that I needed was, um, well, I, I thought I needed a, a way to, to, to build a very simple static website only based on HTML, J JavaScript, and CSS. Uh, recently, I got very excited about uh, React.js, uh, and so I wanted to use that, that bit of technology. Uh, so I had to host the static website somewhere. I thought I'd use um, Nginx, and we the only concern that uh, to avoid uh, like uh, the cross-origin uh, resource sharing problems, I needed to have make sure that my request to the Docker Hub would be proxied. So I had to set up Nginx to do that. And obviously I wanted to deploy the application using Docker, deploy the the, this hack into uh, a container and also update it, making sure that I could update it using containers too. And so that's what I did, that's what we did. So uh, before I go on, and maybe you guys are not familiar with some of the uh, technologies I mentioned, uh, let me give you a very brief uh, uh, high level description of what I used. So the first bit of, of uh, uh, framework that I use is React. React is a JavaScript framework uh, developed uh, inside, uh, uh, inside Facebook, now open sourced, that has a very few, very cool, unique, uh, characteristics and especially um, the way that components are are connected together uh, it reduces uh, uh, the boilerplate and uh, and makes the reasoning about the application uh, uh, much easier and um, it's uh, it, they they explain that it is like the V in the M in the MVC framework but if you have been following a little bit the developments in this area when Facebook guys have come up with actually a new uh, paradigm of, of, of this for designing uh, user interfaces and web applications that they call Flux. And what Flux is, is uh, uh, basically a way to, to transport events through an application which is unidirectional and by constraining this direction uh, where how, on how messages are passed through the application, uh, reasoning about the application becomes very easy. Getting on board people becomes very easy and so for me it has been a, a, quite a pleasure to start uh, studying this this framework and getting it and get it to work with it so that that's one one bit of technology that i've used the second one is obviously the docker setup for it uh, as i told you i only needed a static uh, uh, a set of static files to deploy somewhere on a web server so if you want to have a look at my docker file you'll see that it's very very simple i just uh, pull the nginx image the official nginx image uh, copy 
the certificates because um, I, I had to use uh, HTTPS because uh, the bucket required everything to be uh, HTTPS. And uh, I need to uh, add my own configuration for the proxy setup, which I'll show you just uh, afterwards. And then uh, I had to just to add the source uh, code, the source files, the JavaScript files, the HTML files that I wanted the Nginx to serve. And to solve the course problems, I just needed to make sure that I could query the Docker Hub APIs um, through a proxy so that uh, JavaScript would think that it would actually call the local, the local host. And this is uh, just the, the relevant part of my Nginx configuration file. And uh, with all this set up, I'm ready to go and I know what you guys are thinking. You get to work already. Come on, show me what you did. And I have another one for you and says like, do you guys recognize this one? It says, uh, where is my demo Leboski? And so I'm praying to the, to the demo gods. Hopefully now I can show you what I, what I came up. Let's start from the end. So go to Bitbucket and refresh. So I, show, I, I show you a page that contains um, a Docker file and has the same name on the on the Docker Hub, and what you just saw appearing is this uh, yeah small static website that I've created that is now uh, plugged into the project overview page of Bitbucket. Now you might say, is this live on Bitbucket? Yes, it is. So what I did, I worked with some of the Bitbucket guys. Uh, and uh, we agreed to open a small iframe window in there where I could plug my code. So um, it is live right now, but it is uh, obviously only turned on for uh, uh, a group of users in internal to Bitbucket. And we'll see what's going to happen of, of this feature in the future. But for now, it's just, just a hack. So I showed you that it's actually working, but I want, what I wanted to do is actually go one step forward and show you that I can do a live update of this. Uh, using Docker containers. So I'll switch to the command line and, and we we'll go through uh, the process together. So uh, if, if I do Docker images, you'll see that I have uh, built an image called Durden BitHub. I call this uh, very creatively you know, BitHub. And um, what I wanted to do is I'll do a live code change, rebuild the lo my local image, push the, local, push, the, push the image, and then uh, redeploy it using fig. So if I go to uh, source and I know that there's a component that I need to change, which is like the Docker images one, and um, I want to just change some text so that um, I can show you that we do a live deployment. So we do, um, and I go, let's do it like this. Hello, gods, and I save it. Now, what I can do is just rebuild my local image. Uh, I want to show you what the build command contains. So the build command is very simple. It just regenerates the entire uh, JavaScript of the application, stores it in a, in a, in a file name called bundle.js, and then I rebuild the, the application, so using the Docker file. The Docker file is very simple. It just copies the content of the source folder, add my certificates, and, um, and the proxy is set up for Nginx. So in, that, in this case, rebuilding the image, only the last step should happen. So it, I rebuild the image now, and what will happen, uh, a, new, a new image will be created, a tag with the latest tag, and uh, the build script also pushes this new image to, to the index. Um, right now, the GitHub one is a private image, and, um, and after that's done, we'll update it on the live server. There's many ways, obviously, to handle this. I, I just hacked, hacked together a script that, al uh, that allows me to redeploy on my uh, small um, Docker box uh, an image and get it up, run up and running. And uh, so the, we are, I'm pushing a new version of the image. And after that's done, we'll update it on the live server and see what happens. So give it a few more minutes, give it a few, few more seconds, so ho hopefully. And because uh, right now I am in Sydney and uh, the server that I started up is in Amsterdam, see there is a slight um, delay on this. It should actually, generally it is uh, quite fast. So we let it go. And, um, and then we'll see if uh, the demo gods have been 
uh, kind to me. Mm. All right, the push is still happening. All right, hopefully soon. I might cut this part of the video. <laughs> Buffering to disk, all ah, right, so now it's actually pushing uh, the updates pushing the tag all right so now on the docker index we have a new version of uh, uh, image of my application and if I want to um, uh, redeploy it what I cooked up together is uh, I, I, I have a, a box running with docker running I created a very simple fig file which is I can show it to you it's very simple it just says I want to run the Durden GitHub application and open two ports the port 80 and the port 443 and my deployment script is uh, incredibly simple and what it does is uh, it just pulls the latest uh, web image it stops the previous one and restart uh, uh, the, the containers in in um, in demo mode so uh, so that they stay up in the background so let's do it see what happens so this is now commands being run remotely on this ssh box that i have access to and the new uh, image is being pulled a new update uh, to, to the application is being pulled and the application is restarted and if everything goes or goes well by refreshing the page we should have now a live deployment on production on the bucket for your pleasure to view so let me try let me see let's see if this worked and uh, I'm refreshing the page crossing my fingers and um, and voila, so we have redeployed live on the bucket, uh, uh, a container, containerized uh, static site, and that actually gets the information from the Docker Hub into, into the bucket. I was very pleased with the result of this. Obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a tiny hack, uh, but I um, hope you guys found, found this useful. And if, if, uh, if you have feedback or you liked it, yeah, like tweet at me at Durden and um, I'd be happy to know what you guys think about it. Thank you very much for listening and uh, see you in the next time. Bye.